Hello everybody, welcome to Clash of the Correspondents. My name's James and today I'm joined by two individuals probably not too happy with the start of their Premier League campaigns. We are joined by Ben Tomo Thompson at FPL underscore Blade. How are you Tomo? Doing good, doing good. Good man and we're joined by Dara Curran at the Tinkerman, our Fulham correspondent. How are you Dara? Very good, thank you. Good stuff. Uh, I've, I've been a bit nervous about this one because I don't think we've ever done a COTC before where we've got eight games between the two of you and we've got no points. Uh, Tomo, as the home team, I'm going to lump it on starting with you first. What's happening? Um, <laughs> not too sure. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, we've had a couple of tight games. Um, I think we should have probably got some at Villa. Leeds game was a toss up, could have gone either way. Um, also, game wasn't very good. Um, I feel like losing O'Connell is huge, and like we said after the restart, um, and we're just not overloading on the on the on the left and the right side now. Um, Robinson's not really getting forward, so I feel like we've lost his identity a little bit. Um, I got away from what we were playing. There's a lot of people on the outside of me think it's as simple as you're not scoring goals. And we know you, you weren't free scoring last year and stuff. But essentially, the defensive record's not abysmal. You haven't been, I mean, there's mad scores flying around. You've not been involved in any of them as yet. Is it just a simple case of you're not scoring goals? Yeah, not scoring goals. That's the problem, right? Everyone else is scoring goals, but we're not. And uh, we've, had a couple of, we've had a couple of tough breaks in a couple of the games. Um, and then, you know, it's not scoring that first goal really hurts us. Um, we haven't done that yet. Yeah, you always feel like you're a team that's going to be in trouble if you go behind. Correct. Be- because of that, um, the way you obviously transition with the ball in wide areas, etc. While you're levelling games or ahead, teams get really worried about what you're doing. Do you think there's an element that teams are beginning to understand that that's where the main threat is? I mean particularly in the restart period, we saw like Tottenham and Chelsea particularly, just like, it was like the two teams had never fucking watched you play before or anything. Yeah. I, I, I don't think so because I just don't think we're playing the way we, should, we usually play so far. I think that's the issue. We're not overloading and we're not getting those overloads that we usually do. We've gone away from the way we've played last season so far. Um, and I don't so you, know why that so is. So you see, do you genuinely see a real change in sort of strategy and, philosophy then in terms of how you're playing I don't I just don't feel like this team's our first choice team and I think that's where the issue is right I don't think we've got that creativity or you know like I said O'Connell's the most important player everyone's going to say oh Anderson's not here etc but O'Connell's the most important part because he's just such a good player and I'm out left and this is the problem we have in the transfer window is no one else plays like we do so how do you find a ready-made replacement for O'Connell there isn't one and that's the issue that I see for us. Um, so we might have to adapt and change the way we play, but at the moment we're not. Um, and I just don't think we've got first choice players in those positions. This is far from our first choice team, in my opinion. We are Osborne right. and Lundstrom, and you know we're playing Burke up for anyone who played much football. Um, it's it's tough. It's tough so far. It's been a tough four games. I want to come back to what you think in terms of ideal eleven, then, but obviously you want to get Dara into the conversation. Um, it feels like it's been no better for yourself. And I know you've been very frustrated with Fulham start. The whole country all, already thinks, right, whipping boys, got to beat you every week. W- where do you sit at the moment, Sam, do you feel? And do you feel better since you obviously bought a few players in on Monday? Yeah, I think, I mean, after the Villa game, that was just so low. It, was, it looked like they'd never played together, some of the players. Um. I don't know, there was, there was definitely signs of life from the Wolves game, although I don't think Wolves played particularly well all the same. Um, but I think Parker's kind of playing with one hand behind his back in that he, he wasn't given the transfers or he wasn't allowed to get in the guys he really wanted in time. It's, it looks like we're making the same mistakes as last season, just signing people too late in the window. We're already four games in and we haven't got a point on the board. Hopefully that won't be the case come the end of the season, but yeah, he was promised defensive reinforcements and they didn't come. I still think we're we probably might make one more signing from the championship. Yeah, that, to be honest, that's worth saying for the pair of you is that you can obviously still go into into that market. And I think your two clubs that 
that possibly will. Have we overestimated how bad the start is? I mean, the Villa game was, I said on the podcast, Dennis Odoi has finished his Premier League career there, and I feel bad about it now because I think he actually fucking did. Um, why was that so bad compared to what you saw when you were coming up? And is it a case that we're overestimating the results? Because, okay, you lost 4-3 to, to Leeds. Leeds looked very good. You conceded mm-hmm. three to Villa. I mean, I've seen teams do worse recently. Are the results not as bad as they look? Or I don't know. We're, we're still, like, if you look at the types of goals that we've conceded against Arsenal and against Leeds, it was like sloppy goals from set pieces. The, the first goal against Leeds in particular, where it just given the players too much time on the edge of the box, uh, free like a header, free header against Arsenal, just under the keeper's legs. Like silly mistakes like that can be cut out. Um, then a couple of goals we can see that have been like when we've the, the the opposition have broken our press and they've they managed to beat us like a couple of times against Leeds and then the third goal of Bamiyang's against Arsenal where you know you can't really do too much about that. And then you've got like these silly errors where you've got Tim Ream just setting up Lacazette to knock the ball into the back of the net. Like, if we can cut out that side of the game, I think we can keep it tighter at the back. We, we've got the two new signings that we did make. They're both massive, like 6'5", six, 6'4", six, the two of them. So in terms of defending set pieces, hopefully that will help in that, in that aspect of it. I don't know if both will come straight in. I don't know what sort of system. It could be four at the back. It could be three at the back with two wing backs. I don't know what way Parker's going to play it. Like he could do something like he did at Villa. But I think the Villa one, there were so many midfielders out. Like Reed was out. Lamina wasn't Lamina wasn't in the squad. Seri wasn't in the squad. Johansson wasn't in the squad. So he ended up playing Tom Kearney as like DM, which just was not his role at all. And played five at the back or three at the back, whatever way you want to call it. And we just got absolutely overran in midfield. So that 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 was the way I saw that game. Like Whereas in the other ones, we were actually kind of, I wouldn't say we were in the games, but certainly in the Leeds one, we probably could have got something from the game if we hadn't let such easy goals in. You didn't help yourself in the first three games. You conceded so early in each one as well. You're, like, you're <laughs> chasing the game straight away, that, mate. That, that Wolves game is the first game where we haven't conceded in the opening eight minutes of a half. Exactly. We conceded in every single half. We've conceded so early. Oh, should you so should you have got something at Wolves? Because I I didn't watch the game. I pulled the short straw and ended up watching Tomo's team. Um, possibly. I mean, if if you think about it, the Camaro chance was our biggest chance, but we didn't create too much other than that. Ideally, you wanted Mitrovic on the end of that chance, but it happened to be the other way around. I think he probably would have put it away if it he was the score. other way around. Yeah. He almost had too much time. He just took it first chance either side of the keeper and it's, it's in. He could have taken the touch. Yeah. Even even Mitrovic was almost unselfish to pass it because he kind of turned and inside to get, to shape the bender, and he just saw, obviously saw Kamara in open space. But look, it is what it is. It look it's it's improvement on what what the first three performances were. But we'll see what happens with these new guys. Some guys who will definitely add quality to the squad, and yeah, fingers crossed we can get a few points on the board in the next four. I, w- I want to come back to, obviously, the new signs. What I kind of want to do with the two of you is kind of go through your teams a little bit from from back to front and understand yep. what's not working and, and what can be done to improve. So, Tom, I was only chatting about the short short stuff, mate. Um, h- how do you feel about Ramsdale at the moment? Because I was very critical on him from the, the first two games, the Wolves and the Villa goals. I thought he could have done better. No blame on the goals since. But is that something psychologically that's that's different? Because your goalkeeper last year was was outstanding, frankly. Yeah, I mean, we all know how good Emerson is. But he hasn't... I, I see what you're saying about the goals from the first two games. They're not clangers. They probably, no. he probably could have done better. Um, I just think and, Henderson would save them, is, is, is the yeah, answer, I think, basically. I, I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. Um, and let's just be right. Henderson's a top-five goalkeeper in the Premier League, in my opinion. I think Ramsdale's more a 9-13 to 13 kind of range, middle-of-the-road goalkeeper, which... We understand, but um, I thought he did well against Leeds, um, and I don't think he was—he could have done anything with the two goals against Arsenal. So I think he's settling in. It's going to take time. He's, he's still young, so I'm, I'm relatively happy with Ramsdale. I think he'll be okay. He had a 
one little bit, a moment in the Arsenal game where he kicked it straight to Bobby Yang, but then made a decent save. But apart from that, he was solid. I think he's kind of settled in. Um, so I'm, I'm not too worried about Ramsdale. Okay. Well, and we've, we've rode at Dara because loads of people was buying him because of you. <laughs> I know. Um, I thought, I, I honestly, I thought we might get somebody in and you kind of had a hint that Beth Nelly was going to leave, but we've obviously upgraded. He, he, he clearly is an upgrade. Like he's got, he's got that quality and World Cup winner. He pulled off a ridiculous save against Wolves, double save. I think it's a bit harsh on Roller. I didn't think I thought he'd like start the season and get his chance to to kind of stake his claim for the jersey. I didn't expect Ariola to come in so soon, but you know he's there now. I don't want to chop and change anymore and do what we did last season. Is he definite upgrade then? Is that obvious and clear? He looked it from the Wolves game. I we'll see what happens now with like he he can't like there's some of the goals he just couldn't really do anything about. Even the Wolves one, it came through a couple of. A couple, couple of bodies and he didn't really see it late so yeah I, I don't know we'll, we'll hopefully these guys in front of him as well make a difference are you are you generally better off with a back four Dara generally I'd say so yeah yeah um, I mean we, the Villa we, game was a particular anomaly I mean it was so bad I don't know why I, I sort of understand why he did it he was just kind of without the midfielders he was trying to just put in a couple more defenders and accommodate some other players but I mean that's what that's what bloody Ranieri did last season going five at the back and that didn't work so I'm not sure why he thought that would work mm. so I, two, I, two new centre halves coming on Monday Jockey Manderson from Leon and Tossin can I just call him Tossin yes uh, from Manchester City at the Rubio. I mean I really should know because I bought him a football manager uh, years ago so I really should know his name but that's a difficult one to pronounce. We'll, we'll call him Tossin for benefit. Uh, uh, do we expect both to go straight in? Is that the plan? Or is it just like get anybody's in there defensively? I think I think there will eventually be the two centre-backs, whether both go in straight away, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how up to speed they are. Um, but I reckon that they will probably take over if it's four at the back that we're playing. Um, but I'd say both of them will, will definitely be looking to go. Both of them are both playing centre-backs. They like to. They're comfortable on the ball. They can progress the ball out from the back. A lot of like they play a lot of long passes to kind of uh, set the attack in motion. So I think that will kind of both of them will suit their style. One plays left and right, so it's like ideal. That's exactly right. what we what we wanted. Yeah. Okay. So you brought the Marchand in at, at Wolves. Did, was it better partly because of him or? I feel he's kind of gone a bit of a raw deal. Like he's not fantastic, obviously, but. He's kind of was left out in the cold a lot last season. He suffered a lot of injuries. I think it was more Hector was just diabolical at the start of the season and he might have just settled a little bit beside uh, beside Tim Ream. I, I don't know whether he'll he'll don't know whether he'll do much, to be honest with you. And what's the, the thinking on, on the new right back? I understand he's got a calf injury, I understand. Kenny Tete. Tete, yeah. I th- hopefully he'll be back. I think he went off to see to get scans or to get a, a proper look at it, but hopefully he'll be back at the end of the international break because he looked he looked good from what we've seen so far. Like to get forward, putting a lot of balls into the box. Uh, already got has he two assists? Well, one assist, one fantasy assist, I think. Not that that makes much difference. Goodness, when, you're, de- when you're conceding because of the goals conceded, goals, I'm not sure yeah. how many attacking returns exactly. he's got. Mate. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Um, it was a debut for Anthony Robinson as well. Did he impress? Yeah, he did in the cup game previously as well. He looks just very direct, a lot of pace. Himself and Brian linked up quite well. I'm not sure if that's something we're going to see going forward. I guess it depends if we bring in another winger. Uh, I'd expect Lukeman to play on the left, but he can also play on the right. So if it could be Brian and, and Robinson playing on the left. Who played higher? Rob, uh, Sorry, Brian played the further forward. So Brian played as left midfield, basically. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Tomo, you said obviously O'Connell's massive miss. What's what's the solution there at the moment? Because we obviously most of us would have seen this as a problem during the restart period when O'Connell was missing. That that Newcastle game was even before the Egan red card. The way you attacked, everything went down the right side. It was very uncomfortable with Jack Robinson. But then, like against Tottenham and stuff, he was better. He looked like he was integrating into the system and stuff. Is is he going to play there as the left sided centre half? 
Um, I think so at the moment. Um, he's doing okay defensively. He's been solid. He's been fine. But he just doesn't get forward. He doesn't get over the halfway line. And it's such a key, vital role for us. Um, I think, you know, Wilder's already said he wants a replacement from the championship. So I'm looking at a few different people. Um, personally, I would maybe pull Stevens into that position. He's played there in the championship at left center back. Okay. And then maybe play Lowe, put Lowe left wing, wing back. Or even Ampadu. And the only thing with Ampadu is his right foot. I, thought, I was very impressed with Ampadu against Leeds. I thought he played well, carrying the ball out. A uh, lot more comfortable on the ball. But I think Wilder's pretty you know, strict on having a left foot, left foot player there. So I don't know if that'll be an option. So, I, I, it's not something I'd thought of, actually, Ender Stevens playing as the wide centre-half. Actually, that would make sense uh, at the moment because it feels like, in an odd way, you've lost one of the, if not your key defender, and you're poorer for it offensively, um, partly because of that. So Stevens, you would think, could play that role. What do we know about Max Lowe? Is that his best position? Is, is he brought in as cover as left wing-back, essentially? Because we had Osborne covered there a bit last year, didn't he? Which is not his natural position. Yeah, he played there against Burnley in the Carabao Cup, and he played well, what I saw. Um, he looked comfortable. He's good going forward. Um, so I think that's definitely an option. I think we're going to start seeing Lowe and Bogle start getting opportunities whether it's off the bench. Um, same on the right side with Baldock. Like, Baldock's good defensively, but his, in the final third, he, he was always lacked. That's part of his game he lacks. Um, obviously, he, had a, he did well last season, but Bogle's a lot more attacking. So I think you might start seeing Bogle as well, maybe in the second half of games, if we're behind or need a goal. Um, so, something's got to change. So if he doesn't bring Stevens into centre-half position, we're saying Bogle is competition for Bulldog and basically low is competition for Stevens as left wing back, essentially. Correct. So you, your options, essentially, to replace O'Connor are Robinson, which seems to be the favoured, and Padu, who is a very, very talented player, but I don't I don't think he's left-sided centre-half, personally. No. And yeah. um, Jagielka, which I guess would mean moving Egan into that position. I don't yeah, see that. Is happen. that an option? <laughs> I, don't see, I don't think that's an option. No? So it probably means... Formation. It prob- <laughs> yeah. well, is, that, is that the alternative, then? You go to a back four? Uh, potentially. I think some has got to change, you know. Maybe it'll change it up go back four. I don't know. I guess it depends on what happens in the next 10 days in the market if he finds someone that he's comfortable with. But like I said, it's such a tough position to come into. It's not, no one else plays like we do. So we can't sign someone and expect them to go straight into O'Connell's position. I think it's going to take time, whatever that's going to be. I still think Robinson, I just don't think he's got the attacking skill set to, to play that position for us. No, I agreed. I, I wonder with the, obviously the break now, et cetera, if yeah, he might be considering the the back four, but it means completely different structure. I, I don't know what happens to you then in terms of if that's that's better because you're such a threat with the overloads. I just think playing in a flat four is it's not going to work in the same way. Yeah. It might you could even argue it probably isn't even suitable to playing with an extra man up front unless you went to like a four or flat three and played with wide forwards. I don't maybe Burke could play a sort of a wide forward role, but I don't think you really have the makeup of players to play. 4 3 3 as such, either. I suspect you'll probably stay with the back three and he'll, he'll just go with it and he'll just work on it, work on it, work on it. I saw improvements in Robinson, as I said, as then games went on in a restart, but I get it. it's not it's not the same. And I think people un- underestimate, and we spoke about it at the time, how important if you miss one of those key components from that back five, it's just not right. He's identified the problem with the wing backs, he's got cover, but it looks like he probably hasn't got the right cover at centre half yet. Is yeah. how it looks because Ampadu's probably, yeah. probably sweeper would probably be his best position, wouldn't it? He'd be the backup yeah. for Egan essentially. That's how I see it. Yeah, that's why you play when Egan was out against Leeds and he played well. But you know, Egan's going to start in that position. So, um, what's happening in your midfield, Dara, with Reed, Lamina, etc. At the moment, you mentioned obviously Tom Kearney ended up playing not an alien position, but not suitable for him against Villa. What's what's happening there at the moment? We haven't seen Lamina, have we? No, he's got some sort of a knock. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I don't even think he's started any Carabao Cup games. So yeah, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure what's going on with him. Um, it's, it's, Seri looks like he's staying. He said he wants to stay because his family are here. So we've got a lot, actually, too many. We need, probably need to shift some people. I think Johansson will probably go. McDonald has been told that he can leave. 
if he finds club on a free. Well, the problem is yeah. Alexis Seri, he's not going to go into the championship and stuff, is he? So no, 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 no one I, down there is going to be I don't, wages. I don't know where he, I don't know where he fits into the team. Like, I, I'm, maybe we are trying to offload him, but I just, I, I don't know where he fits into our system. He just, I, I think it was like the same as last time when we were in the Premier League. It was just he didn't fit. We tried to like shoehorn him in. It was like fitting square pegs into round holes. I could be proved wrong on that, but and I hope I am. But I just don't think he suits our team. Is is that the case with Anguissa? Because quite, I saw a few people picking him up on wild cards on that sort of those who did it game week three and so because he created, created quite a few chances in the Leeds game if I remember correctly. Um, is he impressing at all? You you look more like a physical presence when he when he plays in there. Yeah, I I really like the look of him. I think he's different gravy altogether. Um, I was just looking through our some of our stats from this year, and the only through ball that we made this season was from Anguissa, and that was for Bobby Decker over his read against yes. uh, his goal against Leeds, where he held off the the defender or the midfielder and slipped him in. So is part of the key getting Kearney higher because when you came up a couple of years ago, it felt like Kearney ended up playing on the right. He didn't feel quite right. Then, obviously, I didn't watch too much of you last year, in all honesty. But Kenny seemed to play this very deep lying role against Brentford in the final. What, what is his best role? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, he's been kind of playing sometimes that high position and then sometimes further back. I think he kind of likes to just orchestrate the play and dictate the pace of the game. And probably the deeper position will suit him. But then... If you're going to play Reed as the DM who's going to like sweep up everything and tackle anyone that's within sight of him, then you have to lose out on one of the other mids. So I think there'll be a lot of rotation, a lot of competition for that other spot, whoever gets in there. I I, wonder... Personally, I see Reed and Anguisa being the two if we do play a two. Yeah, as double pivot, yeah. I think then... Ruben, Ruben Loftus-Cheek must have been promised game time, so I reckon he's going to play. What do you what do you think of that? Because I I wouldn't say my jaw dropped, but I was like, wow. Yeah, apparently we're only paying like a quarter of a salary, and Chelsea are paying the rest. I don't know what's going on there, but if he can stay fit, there's a player in there. Oh, he's a super player when he's when he's fit, mate. I think he'll add something different just to transition from midfield into attack. Uh, something that we're definitely missing because. We're, we're progressing the ball up to the final third and it's just at that, at that point we just can't seem to get it into the box or get it to the right players. Again, we're just trying these stupid crosses rather than it's just target Mitrovic. That's the plan so far. I think we need to, like Lukeman came on the other day and it was just a couple of one-twos, a little bit of vision and he saw slipped in Mitrovic and then laid it off to Kamara. Like, so simple that he was only on the I pitch saw for you, like 20 uh, minutes yeah Luke, Luke in 20 minutes more complete passes than Cavaliero in 70 right he's awful I don't ever <laughs> want to see him <laughs> he didn't he didn't make a single tackle in the game he didn't create a chance he didn't take a shot I don't know what he was doing on the pitch like seven what did he have 16 completed passes in 76 minutes it's absolutely it's, atrocious it's, it's nearly <laughs> accept, it's nearly acceptable if you're a forward <laughs> it's awful we we had like fifty two percent possession in that game as well. Yeah, I mean Wolves often give that that up and they 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 kind of lull you into that false sense. You make you feel like you're doing better than what you did. And but the one real chance you had was basically from a counter, right? Lukeman did brilliant in a really deep left hand channel position, and exactly what you said, he broke free. Then you play and you're away, and it's the first time we'd seen that from you really. And I understand what you're saying about Loftus Cheek. It's interesting where where he fits in because if he played at 10 every week you would think well do you know what he's capable of maybe getting eight to ten goals possibly if he played as a 10 but then I don't know if he's better off playing deeper for you because you'll have better domination Mm -hmm. of games and he'll he'll transition the ball for you better what's your thoughts yeah I I don't I think it depends on the opposition or who what system we're going to play where he'll play on the pitch um yeah I think against the tougher teams we might play like a a three at the back in possession and a five out of possession with, with a three-man midfielder. Maybe maybe two up top, maybe Mitrovic and Luke, Lukeman just playing off him. Um, but I think so, some of the other games it'll probably be a back four, four, two, three, one. And he could be that number 10. Do you think Tomo Loftus-Cheek's the sort of player you should have targeted? 
Yeah, that's what I wanted. I thought he was pivotal. Oh, right, touchdown. interesting. Um, yeah, what, what, right side of the field. Tell us more then. I just thought he was on 100 plus grand a week and that's what he wanted and it was at our price range. But if Dara's was saying 25% of his wages, I don't know why we wouldn't have gone for him. I mean, fucking, like if, if you're paying him 25 grand a week, under I mean, we shouldn't laugh yeah. about these sums, but it's kind of robbery, isn't it? Um, under the climate, you got a full England international if he's fit, right? Everybody yeah. thought it's only like two years ago he was playing at the World Cup for England, and everybody thought it was going to be a big thing. Um, it's a, it's it's all been hampered by injuries. I don't think anybody's doubting the ability of the player at all. Yeah, uh, what I like is a lot of the more recent signings that came. They all seem to have a point to prove. Like Loftus Cheek wants to get back into the England squad for next year. Uh, Lukeman didn't quite cut it in the Bundesliga. It didn't cut it in the Premier League. Wants another crack. And Anderson is that his name? Or yeah, Andreas from Leon. Anderson. He was. The, he's a Leon's record signing. Yeah. Like twenty four. I've, I've seen a few people say. Plus. I've, so, I've seen a few people say good things about him, but I kind of want to see him play for you before I say he, anything else. He said that he turned down Arsenal to go and play Champions League football at Lyon. So, like, the, there was a lot of big teams sniffing around. Um, I think what happened to him last season with Lyon, he had a really good season with Sampdoria, and then they, they, Lyon switched to a back three, and it just didn't suit him, and he started losing game time. Okay. And then Adam, whatever, his Tossin. 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 He was, like, touted as the replacement for company at one stage. Yes, he was. So, he, so he's he obviously sees his chance now he wants to thinks he's ready for the Premier League so th- those four I think just have a point to prove and hopefully they'll put in a shift for us I think what you say there about Anderson there that's good insight that makes me think back four mate I think mm-hmm. um, and yeah they'll they'll try and integrate the, the new two the two new players together to play that position the one I'm intrigued about is obviously this, this Brian Robinson tie up because we all love mm-hmm. an OOP I don't suppose Absolutely. you're going to go recommending Fulham defenders to anyone at the moment. But, Absolutely not. You know, if Brian was to play left midfield, is that of any interest to anyone? I'd have to wait a couple of games and see how we start playing. We, we, like if we're tighter than we are, potentially. But I don't know if it's guaranteed that he's going to get that spot. Um, we, there was a link today that um, for Knockhart to go to Forrest on loan. Chris Hutton's just taken over and obviously he's managed oh, him yeah, before. Yeah. So that would indicate that we might be looking for another winger. And then then there's more chance of rotation with Brian if he if he's going to play the midfield. Lukeman's going to go straight into that team, isn't he? I'd imagine so. Yeah, I, I'm surprised he didn't come on earlier against Wolves, to be honest. He's the interesting one, really, isn't he? Five million. Yeah. I don't know what we're comparing him to. We're comparing him to the likes of Suchek, Jorginho, Sander Berge. I don't know. Does he stand out now at that price range, potentially? Again, I think it's a bit of a wait and see. I, I'm i honestly more worried about our attack than I are our defence at, at the moment. We just seem a bit too one-dimensional. And hopefully that he'll add another aspect to our game. But from what I've seen in the early games, it's just get it to Mitrovic. There doesn't seem to be any other tactics. Other I, th- than I that. think that's got to change now, hasn't it? With with Lukeman and and Loftus Cheek, they're different players. That's got to change a little bit, and it needs to be seen to be given a chance. I think. Um, Tomo, you mentioned obviously not playing your strongest team at the moment. So, wh- what's the strongest midfield for you? I think no one's got to come back in, and I think obviously he's probably weak defensively. He hasn't got the legs. He, he's never really had the legs, but. In integral to the way we play, switch and play quickly, and we've missed that. Um, and he just kind of dictates that midfield. Um, you know, is that Burge's natural position? Yes, but I thought Burge was really coming to his own in that right side midfield position. Um, and after the restart, so I want to see Norwood, Burge on the right, Fleck on the left. Fleck has to come back in, and there's nothing against Osborne. Osborne's a good backup. It's fine to come on, he runs around, but he just doesn't have the quality. And now you're taking Fleck and O'Connell out on that left-hand side. It's just a totally different team. So those are the three that I'm going with at the moment. I think we need help in that position. Create, we need someone where we submit a creativity. But, which we don't why, have, have right now. why have Norwood and Fleck not been starting? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. People say they lost form after the restart, but I know Norwood 
didn't have the best game against Wolves and he's dropped out. I, I, I just don't know. I think we've been too defensive in the last three games. I think we should have played both of those players, but I'm not I, sure. I'm, I'm, am I right in saying Norwood has got, I'm not saying better passing ability than Burge, but he's probably got more range. He seems to, the, the one I always felt with you, he, he always, he looked, he, as soon as Norwood got the ball, it was getting pinged out to the wing backs and quickly. Yeah. And it feels like that's not been happening in the games that I've watched this season. Is that fair? That's spot on. That's where we're not getting those overloads as well. We're not getting that ball quickly to them. People to get see them it forward. coming. Yeah. And Burge is, is a very good player. Let's be, I mean, he's, yeah, he's he looks fun. a great player. But he's a little slow in the way he plays. I feel like he kind of strolls around. And it's not like he's not trying. I just feel like he doesn't have that urgency that no one has to get that ball out wide quickly. He's picking it up and no one's pinging it, like you said. And I really think Burge gives us more in that right center field position. And it's nothing against Lundstrom. I think Lundstrom's done okay so far. He's been a little unlucky. I mean, Mr. Penalty should have scored against Leeds other than that really good save. Um, last season, you know, those go in for us, right? And we potentially get some out of those games. Um, but... Um, I just feel like we need that bit more quality in there. And those three give us that bit more quality and bit more going forward, in my opinion. Do you think you'll buy? I'm not sure. We've got a loan left. So I'm not sure if we are potentially going to loan someone from championship. I, I would love Brooks. <laughs> but why, 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 would, why, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you just buy David Brooks? I don't know. I don't know if we have the funds, or I don't know how much they're asking for. I talked to Neil, and he said they want fifty million for him. Oh right, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, obviously, you know, Brooks just stock went up when he went from us, but I think his stock's gone back down now, right? I mean, he's been he's had a few well, injuries. He's not uh, yeah, games. he's had he's had terrible luck with injuries and illnesses over the last year and a bit. Uh, David Brooks is a very talented player. The first time I ever saw him, Tom, I was, was for you when you won 4-2 at Wednesday. It was the game oh, I yeah. always used to reference. He was brilliant. It caught my eye straight away. Um, even I don't think he scored that day, but he was great. Just yeah, completely fantastic. fearless kid. Um, it's interesting that because from the outside of opinion, I, I look at it and think, so if he came back, where does he fit in? I think then we could probably, and there's been discussions that he might play Burge and Norwood in a two- and then have a 10 in front, a more creative in front. So maybe we switch to that in that way and get Brooks in there. I don't think we have that play right now. We've, we, when we've been behind in games, we've gone to a four, four in the back a few times and put McGoldrick in the hole a little bit. But we just don't we'll, – we'll make room for Brooks. So Brooks could play up front, you know, two, behind, you know, Burke or Moussa or Brewster. But – We'll Did, him in. There's yeah. still so many good players from the championship, even just from the three relegated sides who are yeah. up for grabs. You, you know, you like Svishmael Asar, Brooks, you mentioned there, Josh King, for example, Todd Cantwell yeah. at Norwich could probably do a job for both of you even. These guys I don't anticipate are still going to be at their clubs when that window shuts. They're all coming to the Premier League, in my opinion. Brooks might not because of the injury issues, but I think... The other three I mentioned definitely will, and it will improve sides when they go into them, unless Manchester United just want to stock up with another right winger yeah. on their bench, for example, yeah. in Ishmael Assar. Mitrovic, Dara, there'll be a lot of guys who are on him from an FPL perspective, and probably the one thing that really put me off at the start was the idea that if I get him in, he'll fucking sit there for nine, ten weeks, because your fixture run still looks okay. Yeah. What's, what's your thinking? Um, I don't know. I was looking at the the Serbia's games this week. So they're playing tomorrow. That's the 8th. Then they're playing on the 11th. And then they're playing on the 14th. And then we play Sheffield United on the 18th. So he plays all three of those games in the space of a week. It's a lot, a lot of travel and a lot of game time. That would really put me off. Is that, is that why he didn't play against Arsenal in game week one? Uh, that I don't know. I'm not sure whether... It, he had picked up a niggle or whether Parker just kind of saw it as like almost a free hit and didn't want to risk him to save it for another game or whether he wanted to change the tactics and play more counter-attacking style. I don't think Mitrovic really has the pace to do that. But for whatever, I don't know why he didn't start that one, to be honest. I think if he was fit, he should have been starting. Two goals against Leeds, obviously no assists yet. 17 FPL points. 5.9 is all right, isn't it? That's the thing. Yeah, it's not I think forced. we're all looking for the next, which one's going to break out next. Um, 
like look at he could score two the way in the next week and then people will buy him back and then he'll do nothing the Enough next week. People sell him. Like there's so many strikers that are, it's just hard to find the three, the three that are going to be the best optimal three for your squad. How how important as a club is this little run you've got coming up? Because following Sheffield United, you've got Palace and West Brom at home, which look yeah. massive. West Ham away before you walk into Everton, Leicester, Man City, Liverpool. How, so how important is this next run of uh, four games or so? It's pretty big. We need to get points on the board and not be cut adrift by the time December rocks up because it'll just be like the heads that might go down. I hope they don't. Yeah, we'll see. Like Parker's got ten days or two the guts of two weeks anyway to like work on these new signings and drill them on what he wants them to do. Um it seems like I watched all the interviews of the players who have signed and all of them said they spoke to Parker and they liked what they heard that they, they thought that like they'll work on certain details about it about their game and that they suit the squad and our playing style will suit the player and all that sort of stuff. So the, the, sign, the signs are good coming from the player that, that Parker managed to convince them. I think he just needs that little bit of time. To, like We're a squad in transition basically at the moment and we just need that. It's a pity we just had such a short window and a short turnaround from the championship that we didn't really get the chance to bet in some of these players. I just hope it's not going to be too late that that, that turnaround time isn't going to be too short. Do you think you'll stay up? I don't know. It's going to be very difficult. I mean, there's been teams that have done it before that have gone six, seven, eight games without a win at the start of the season. Even even last season, we saw like West Ham, people had written them off at certain stages. People had written off Southampton at certain stages of the season last year. I don't think like Paddy Power paying out after fucking three games of the season is absolutely ridiculous. Have they paid out on you to go down? Paid out, yeah. They're all about the publicity, mate. Anyway, yeah, look, I know where they're coming from with that, but... You know, like there's a, there's a lot of games still to be played, so I wouldn't I wouldn't write it off just yet. But it, no, you, it's going to be very very difficult. You can't be yet. I mean, look, Palace zero points and seven is the one everyone referenced. Right, and wasn't it zero goals as well? I think during that period, um, I, I think what's really interesting these new guys have got to hit the ground running. So the two centre halves, Loftus Cheek, Lukeman, they've got to go in and yeah. do the business straight away. Like we're only three points behind United, so anything can happen. Yeah, but they're shit, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tomo, <laughs> he was talking about Manchester United. By Manchester the way. United, he's, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's obviously he's level with you. Um, are, are you are you worried? I sense you're worried. Um, since last time we talked, I'm worried. Um, I, I don't think we'll go down though. I think we'll stay up. That's a big change of mentality, though, isn't it? Whereas I think in when we spoke three or four weeks ago, the hope would have been you know, try and get top half again, acceptance that it's going to be really difficult because everyone else is improving as well and the investment hasn't really been there in the team. But that's a big, like, mental shift to have to sit there now and go, I think we'll stay up. Because if I'd have said that to you four weeks ago, you, you, you would have laughed at me. You'd be like, fuck off, James, underestimate, underestimate <laughs> you again, right? So, yeah, um, that's a change and that's worrying. And I, I think I know why you're worried as well it's because of what's beyond Fulham um, yeah. in terms of the three games afterwards. And if you don't win... Then suddenly you look at is it City United and Chelsea afterwards? Is it? Or so, no, it's no, worse than that, isn't it? City Liverpool, Liverpool and Chelsea, isn't it? Yeah, Liverpool City Chelsea. And then suddenly you're in that position, like Palace zero from seven and stuff like that. Which again, as we've seen, you can get out of it and stuff. But the, my real worry with you is the goals, mate. So yeah, kind of close on the, the kind of tactical look on it. Rian Brewster, is he going to fucking save you, mate? I think he has to, didn't he? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know much. I've not seen him play, so I'm not going to speak how good he is. I Talking to Liverpool fans, they all rave about him, which is positive. He looked like he had many options where he could have gone and he chose to come to us. Uh, he's exactly what we need. He's a clinical finisher. I talked to Dan, look all load. He said he's the best finisher since Fowler at the club. We need someone who's going to put these chances in the back of it. Because like you said, we're going to get one, two, three chances a game, if you're lucky. <laughs> so we need someone to, to finish these. Um, it gives him more options. The problem we've had so far is Moussa's out. So he's such a vital part too. If we get Moussa fit, we've got Moussa and Brewster up front. I'm feeling like we're going to score goals. And then you've got Burke. Burke's been good so far, actually. I've been quite impressed with him. He's worked hard. He's pretty quick. And then you've got McGoldrick and McBurney. But at the moment, we've 
got Sharp coming off the bench and, you know, Sharp's a legend, but he cannot be playing for us anymore. He, he, I'm not, he doesn't give us anything and that's nothing against him. It's just, he's just past it now. And, you know, yeah, no, I get, you, I, you don't even want to be saying that because of what he's done. For I don't him. want to I say get it, that. No, it's no, 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 no. It's yeah. the truth. We've got him and McBurney and when McBurney comes on, you know, he works hard, but he doesn't scare anybody, let's be honest, right? He's not got pace. He's not, you know, if you've got Moose on the bench, it's a little more different. I, it's part what I, my instinct is that McBurney will be the best partner for Brewster. Because I Correct. just think Mc, McBurney does the really ugly parts of the game well. Um, he's a good finisher if the ball goes into wide areas and stuff, but th- that's the only way he's going to score goals, really. He's good at the yeah. ugly bits. And I think Brewster, genuinely, he is a super, super talent. But he's going to need some protection because he's going to he's going to have games here where he's not involved in the game for 20, 30 minutes. And he's not yeah. going to be used to that. So when it comes up there, I think he needs someone to do dirty stuff for him and let him just spin off and run in behind and and be a poacher and a good finisher. And what I think anybody who's seen him play knows that he's an extremely talented forward and will get goals. But I'd be concerned, for example, that if he played with Moussa, the two of them will just be running in behind and the ball won't get there. That, that would be my concern. So I think a partner yeah. for for Brewster, who's kind of polar opposite, would be the best thing for him. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, but it's just, I mean, Moussa in the squad, like Moussa's best part is coming on the last 30 minutes because he can be terrifying when he's fit. I mean, he, I mean, look at that stretch games he had last year, that two or three months he was scoring goals and he just looked dangerous. And we need him back in that squad too, just to give us something off the bench to worry teams. And like I said, right now, I think we're bare bones right now. We've got to get these players in the grade quickly. Similar to Fulham, they've got, Bruce has got to hit the ground running and if Bo go low, they've got to hit the ground running. Um, but, you know, we're still there. We've, we've conceded, what, six goals in four games. So defensively, I think we're still solid. Best team in um, the league at the moment with that record in it. <laughs> I don't think it's far off, but, um, you know, plus we've got Chris Wilder, right? And you can't underestimate Chris Wilder. Last time we lost four games, first four games, we won the league with 100 points. Yes, it was league one, but I won. I'm not worried about the character of the players. No, it, do you know what? Ordinarily, I would, I would, for most people, I would say, look, if, if you lost to Fulham and then lost the next three, zero points from eight, you'd be looking at it going, manager's gone. I, 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 it, honestly, at that point, I think it would, still wouldn't be in question that he would stay yeah. as your manager. Um, oddly enough, he's no. so secure there. The fans will be completely behind him; they won't change. Um, so that's a positive as well. That you know, it, it, from a fan perspective, it won't spiral into we've got to change and panic. Plus, you've seen that before, as you said. It might have been League One, but you've had that bad start and had an amazing finish before. Um, one final question, Tom: I Ryan Brewster, are you going to buy him? I'm not buying him until I'm not going to look at it week uh, game week nine. I'm going to see how he plays out for. Weeks. I mean, the fixtures are too difficult. Um, if you're going to wild card, then, you know, but there's so many good strikers. Uh, it's like, I want six or seven strikers at the moment. So, do I really want to go to that spot? I think you just need to wait and see. Agreed. Do you, own any, do you own any Sheffield United players, Dara? I don't. I do not. Do you want to? No. Maybe Burke has like a 4.5. But... That would be about it at the moment. Do you know? Do you own any Fulham players, Tomo? No. Do you want to? No. <laughs> it's okay. I don't own any either. <laughs> yeah. Guys, we'll finish with predictions. Tomo, you're the home team. Go on in. I know it's kind of over ten days or so away, but predict it. I'm going to go Fulham one 0 Wow. I think there'll be a lot of pressure on us. <laughs> I'm, I'm the most optimistic, but. <laughs> I honestly see this game going. Oh, wow, 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 wow. All the most the confident game. fucking correspondent I've got just predicted a home defeat to Fulham. Did I hear that right? Yep, yep. I think it's going to be too much pressure. There's a lot of pressure on United at the moment. I think this game, more than Fulham, I think we have to win this game. And I just have a bad feeling. I think Fulham's done some good business in this window. And I think the team's going to change around a lot. Might take some time, but we. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> just got a weird feeling. So I'm going to put my neck out there. Dara, if, if you predict a Sheffield United win, you two just made history and we know how unconfident you both are. <laughs> so predict oh, it, mate. No, I was going to say 1 0, so I was a bit taken aback there when you said 1 0. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say 1 0 for them. I think it's going to be a pretty tight game. I don't think 
quite cagey. I don't think either side is going to want to lose it. But I, Tom, I'm extremely relieved, partly that you said that you think Fulham will beat you, because I do as well. I, I'm I'm really really worried. I don't think you'll go down. But I'm really, really worried about the lack of goals at the moment. And actually, I see more in them in what would be a tight game. And it might be that the the two new centre-halves come in, you put Loftus-Cheek and Lukeman into the midfield, and it actually looks different. And and it might be something positive about it. I do actually think, yeah, they could go there and beat you. It wouldn't surprise me if you you won comfortably. But yeah, I would go Fulham win as well. Fuck. This is not how I expected this podcast to end. (laughs) So one thing, yeah. one thing I I noticed that's a uh, like common denominator between the two teams is like they're like one and two, ranked for shot for crosses into the box. I know that like Sheffield United focus a lot on set pieces and they like to get that's that's where they score some of their goals from. Do you think that's that's going to continue? Because I don't know if like that's suited to Brewster. Maybe he needs like somebody knocking it down to him. Yeah, I think that's going to be the main tactic, or will it change? I think we're going to change. I think it's going to change for sure. Um, there's no one in there right now. McBurney's not even starting, so there's no one to get the end of those crosses. I don't see Burke and McGoldrick going into those crosses, but um, yeah. I have, haven't got I those in-swinging corners either. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Norwood, Norwood put some great crosses in, and we've missed yeah. that too from deep. And those free kicks, he's, I mean, he's a great, Norwood's great dead ball. Um, but, I don't know. We just need someone to go for us. We just need someone to hit someone and go in. We just need, you know, we've had some bad luck. James, I wanted to ask you, what did you think about Luis's pull on Burke on last week? Uh, I'll be honest. I know why you're asking, because I still think that John Egan was a red card. At the time, I wasn't convinced with Luis, but there was an angle they showed on the highlights in England um, that night, which showed that um, Burke would have definitely got to the ball before Leno. So, yeah, red card as well. Yeah, but do you it. know what the other thing is? And I know it's not what you... Listen, I had a guy who fucking rolled over and got the opponent a red card at the weekend from my team. The point is, whether you like it or not, he has to go down and make it obvious. Because if he goes down and makes it obvious, he would get sent off. And that's, that's another point I want to make. In the same game, Lundstrom should have gone down for a penalty. And he didn't. Yes. And I think it's been too and, no, and nobody's it's spoken about it. He was running nope. away from goal towards the, the byline, basically back towards the corner flag. And he got, he got kicked. And if he goes down, yeah. it's a penalty. Um, yeah. To be honest, mate, he's going to get to the stage. Listen, you need to find goals from somewhere at the moment, mate. Take advantage of these things. That's exactly what I think, too. It's That's not, exactly listen, think. nobody wants cheating or anything, but Lundstrom particularly. Even Burke was one where he's probably thinking, oh, I could get there first. And he doubt, Lundstrom should feel the kick and he should go down. Um, no, yeah. I get that 90% of people will say what I'm saying there is not right, but... Literally, if he just goes down onto a knee, everyone knows he's been kicked and VAR will give the penalty because he's clearly adapt. got kicked. You've got to and, adapt to the way and, we're playing. And now. The other thing is as well, because he ain't got down. No one's spoken about it. Till you just mentioned it, I forgot about it. I never spoke about it on Monday. So, yeah, be ruthless. Um, I, I think it's a big 10 days for you, particularly, Tomo, before the game even comes around actually. And it might be you've had a couple of bodies between now and then and then your confidence is up and you'll you'll feel very different. I, I still think you'll stay up to, to go against kind of what I said for prediction of the game. And I, I can't see, Dar, I can't see your team staying up unless there is serious improvements defensively um, would be way the way I'd feel about it at the moment. Fascinating guy. I can't wait to tell Sid you think you'll get beat, Tomo. That's fucking unbelievable. Right, I'm off. Yeah. Really okay. enjoyed. <laughs> really, really enjoyed that, guys. When is the game? Is it, is it on the Monday? The 18th. So what's that? Uh, I don't know. That's the Monday, oh, isn't it? Saturday. Uh, Sunday. 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 The Sunday. They changed it. Oh yeah, no! It's, is it still the Saturday three o'clock at the moment? Saturday isn't it? three o'clock at the moment. Oh right, oh, okay. so it'll, it'll, it'll get moved to something else anyway. We might stay Saturday yeah. three o'clock. Really enjoyed that, guys. Thank you. Really, really enjoyable. Um, I'll be back on YouTube tomorrow, guys. My usual afternoon stream. No deadline stream. Obviously, Saturday is. There's no games. And we'll be back with full content, obviously, from Monday as well. We're going to have a catch-up with Neil Grover at AFC BNG, our Bournemouth correspondent, and Sith Goal at Watford, um, our Watford correspondent. We're going to talk a, a little bit about how their clubs are getting on in the championship. And also, I want to discuss with them the idea of, is FPL management different for them now that their team is not in the league? 
So we'll be speaking about that on Monday. Next Thursday, COTC will be Chelsea versus Southampton. Rotation FPL and FPL underscore gaffer. Other than that, all that leads me to say is thanks very much, everyone. Cue music, please, man, child.